the day has finally arrived. Just like that, the deed is done. <laughs> and now time for the annoying part. It's folding the cloth. Things clear and there's no shade above them. This means that these plants are now getting more light. These shade gloss provide about 50 to 60 percent UV protection, which means that the plants are now getting twice the amount of ultraviolet light. The basic idea behind it is that you need to harden these plants by gradually increasing the sunlight that they get in a day. A generally accepted guideline is to start with 1-2 to two hours of direct sun exposure and increase that by a week or two weeks depending on their growing season. Again, the details behind this will be part of another video because there's a lot of details involved here. Using time as a guide might sound tricky or complicated at first, 
but it is actually fairly straightforward. You probably know of a sundial. It's a device that tells you the time based on the position of the sun and the shadow that it casts on an object. I have a friend named Maddie who's in the Philippines who took advantage of this concept and she has done it really well. She has a practical example of it in her yard and I'm going to link the photos in the description so have a look. It's something that you can also do at home provided that you have an east to west facing wall or you know, surface. All you have to do is to keep track of the sun or the shade's position at certain times of day. Another thing you would want to take note of is the, the quality of light, or rather, the strength of the light. A precise way of measuring that is by using a light meter or a lux meter, but that can be quite expensive. Those devices are typically used for photography, laboratory work, engineering, architecture, something similar. And depending on the features that they come with, they might be affordable, and some would be in the top end and expensive. It might not be cost effective in your case. But of course, the good news here is there are, there are alternatives. If you are familiar with the concept of the exposure triangle in photography, and then you would be able to use that knowledge to gauge the exposure of an area. So all you have to do is to compare, make a comparison of how much, let's say, shutter speed, keep track of the settings from one area to the other and see how much how much stops you need to reduce or increase just to get a decent amount of light. This sounds confusing and a lot to take in, so I'll be doing that, I'll be covering that in another video as well. And finally, a really crude technique that you could use and something that I've recently just thought of is to have a certain type of plant. In my case, I'm thinking of using the indicata because I have lots of these. And what I could do with them is I could plant them at various areas around the gar garden, potential spots where I would want to have my plants in. And I could just compare after a week or so and see how, how they are growing. Some of them might lose color, some of them might deteriorate, some of them might be burnt. So all you have to do is to compare, see what happens to them. It is time intensive, but at least you don't have to spend on some equipment. Personally, the approach that I would take is a bit of both. I would be using the plants at various areas and see where where the plant is doing really well. And what I would do is to take a precise measurement using maybe a light meter or just using my camera and see what settings or what light levels are great. And I would be doing that for all sorts of plants, not just the uh, areas, because as you know, different plants require different amount of sunlight. So you could do that with various specimens. In fact, maybe I should go do that now. I brought the imbricata in this new area and as you can see I'm already surrounded by other chiveria so this is actually a, a useless exercise but it's not entirely pointless because I could just look at the other chiverias to see how they're behaving under this sunlight but at least just for a sanity check it helps just having them and seeing how they would improve in a few weeks so right now as you can see some of them are starting to stretch again they're getting etiolated and the center of the rosettes are getting pale, getting lighter. So it would be really interesting seeing how they would look like in a couple of weeks time. And for reference, you know that I've already planted some imbricata here. And this is how they look like. As you can see, they're looking really nice and they're quite compact. And the colors are a lot better than the ones from the alcove. So this spot definitely gets good light. But I'm still going to plant this here because it would be interesting to see how fast they respond to the change in their environment. So let's go do the planting now. The 
roll here, so we'll see how they look like in a port pack. I'm not sure if you remember this, but I have a basket of string of pearls that that got burnt during summer, and now it looks like it has recovered. Let me go grab it. It seems to have gotten a lot better than before. On the other side, you can still see traces of the sunburn, but this side is recovered. I'd like to be able to move this to a bigger basket. And I should be doing this at some point. I have a lot more pearls here, part of the landscape, and they have been flowing down the rocks already. As you can see, they're crawling and they are at ground level. So I might get a few strands, combine it with this basket, to create a huge hanging basket of pearls. As you can see, we have two baskets of Senecios here, Senecio radicans. These are either the string of beans or string of bananas, depending on who you ask but they are the same species. These two are my mom-in-law's collection. They used to be a lot smaller when we got them. And after a year of growth, this is what she ended up having. And this inspired me. I'm going to add my pearls into this section because this looks like a perfect spot for all of these Senecios. So huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, that means you, Oscarino, Judy Seal, Snapcoey, and most recently, my sister. So if you're interested in supporting me to make videos like these, then simply head over to my Patreon. You can pledge any, any amount that you're comfortable with, no obligations. I keep mentioning future videos. I intend to create a series of explainer videos, you know, in-depth explainers about light, plant care watering soil mix that works because they all tie together there's so much details that they won't fit inside a single let's plant episode so i'll be creating a whole bunch of them so watch out for them for the next episode i will be focusing on my aeoniums again so there would be a huge overhaul in this spot i can't wait to work on it i'll see you then